One of the worst things about modern times is ingratitude is cultivated in people. They're, ingr they're ungrateful for the police, they're ungrateful for government, they're ungrateful for their educations, they're ungrateful for everything. People just complain all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ الشديد. Your Lord has declared, if you're grateful, I will increase you in blessings to be grateful for. But if you are an ingrate, if you lack gratitude, in fact, if you show ingratitude, I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. This is a metaphysical equation. Gratitude equals increase in blessings. Ingratitude equals decrease in blessings. This is a qaida, it's a law. It's a metaphysical law that's as true as the Newtonian physics that you learned in high school. If you're ungrateful, then Allah will give you more to be ungrateful about, more to whine about. You think it's bad now? You have no idea how bad it can get. Read history to know how bad it can get. You think Syria is bad? Read about the Mongol invasion. They didn't have any place to flee to. You, th you think the Muslims are having tribulation in America? Read about Nazi Germany and what happened to the Jews. We have to be grateful because if we're ungrateful and always complaining, Allah is going to give you more to complain about. I was in one of the Gulf states and somebody was complaining about the price of gasoline, the taxi driver, 25 cents at the time. <laughs> now it's a lot higher. Why? Because they keep complaining. Go ahead, complain all you want. Because if you love to complain, Allah will give you plenty to complain about. But if you want to show gratitude, Allah will give you plenty to show gratitude about. They did a study at Davis. It's called the gratitude study for depressed people. They had them write down every day, every morning, 10 things they were grateful for. Over a period of a month, people's depression started being lifted. If you start counting the blessings of Allah, you'll never come to an end. And you can count blessings like just eyelashes. The people don't have eyelashes. They fall out. The eyelashes are a wonderful blessing. Or some people have dry eyes. So if you have moisture in your eyes, what a blessing. If you have teeth, what a blessing. If you don't have teeth, if you have dentures, what a blessing. There are people that don't have dentures. If you lose one arm, what a blessing. You didn't lose both arms. If you lose both arms, what a blessing. Now they have prosthetic devices that enable you to do things. Ibn Abbas said, in every tribulation in dunya, there are three blessings hidden that you have to recognize. The first is that it could have been worse. The second is that it's in your dunya and not in your deen. And the third, in your worldly affairs and not in your religious affairs. And the third, it's in this world and not in the next. And you should be grateful for that. People now are complaining. Allah said, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala." He's going to try you to see who of you are the best in actions. وَلَا نُبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We're going to try you. لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will be tried. In your, in your wealth and in your lives. Allah told us, you're going to hear all these people telling how horrible you are and how terrible your religion is. Allah said that. What does He say? How's our response? What's our response? And if you show patience, and show piety, restraint, control yourselves. Because that is at the essence of this matter. That is at the essence of this matter. This is our deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَا وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُمْ مَثَنَا قَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَا مُطْمَئِنَّا يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَأَذَاقَهَا اللَّهُ لِبَاسِ الْجُوعِ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Allah strikes a similitude for you to think. A similitude. Allah strikes a similitude for you to reflect. A township, a city, a hamlet that was peaceful. It was tranquil. 
It had provision in abundance coming from every place. Like we have today, we eat berries from Chile and we drink tea from China. And we have rice from India, basmati rice in your homes from India. You get all this blessing from all over the world. So what did they do? Instead of saying, Alhamdulillah wa shukurillah, Alhamdulillah, kafarat bi an'umillah. They were ingra- ungrateful. This is the meaning of kufr. Kufr is ingratitude. You can be a Muslim and be a kafir in the meaning that you're, in, you're an ingrate. Right? This is ingratitude. That's the essence of kufr. The essence of Islam is gratitude, shukr, a feeling of blessing that Allah has given. The biggest blessing is that we exist. Ni'mat al-ijad wa ni'mat al-imdad. The blessing of giving us our existence and then sustaining our existence. He could take away that sustenance at any time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he, he enveloped that city in hunger, look, of the blessing of food, in hunger and terror. Hunger and terror. Libas al ju'i wal khawfi. Why? Bima, ba sababiya. What's the cause? Because of their ungratefulness. And this is what we've lost an understanding of our religion. We look at all these events and we don't see the real source of these events. Ingratitude. If we want to change the world, we have to change our state and our attitude about all these blessings that we've been given. Government is a blessing. Even the worst form of government is better than anarchy. Even a tyranny is better. This Malik ibn Anas said this. These, these weren't ignorant people. These were genius people. Because he lived through civil wars. He saw what happens when things break down. The people of Damascus, six years ago, were eating beautiful food. They had good clothes. It was one of the few countries on the planet that was actually self-sustained. And now, all of this tribulation. And if you say, you know, why is it happening to them and not us? Maybe because Allah loves them more. Because we know Ahl sham have a maqam. So Allah will put all of the, 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 the torment of the akhirah, He'll put it in the dunya for a short period, and then they go back to Allah completely free of any tribulation or punishment. Maybe it's the places that aren't being afflicted, that deserve to be afflicted, that should be worried. This is the way Muslims traditionally looked at things. When the Mughal came down, when the Mongols came down, they didn't say, these evil Mongols. They said, هَذَا عَذَابَ بَعْثُ وَاللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا لِذُنُوبِنَا this is a punishment God has sent to us because of our wrong actions. That's how they looked at it. Muslims don't look at that anymore. Evil America, evil Israel, evil... Okay, good. Allahumma marikal mulk tutil murka man tasha. Allah put them in power. He says He gives power to whomever He pleases. Muslim had it. If Muslims had nuclear weapons right now with the idiots that we have, we would have nuclear conflagrations all over. Allah knows what He's doing. Allah knows who He gives power to. Yes, they abuse their power, but to what degree? Who would be worse? People want the destruction of America? Well, let's see what happens when China gets the world power. See if there's going to be an Abu Ghraib that you hear about. See if there's going to be any way, recourse to redressing any wrongs. Allah Ta'ala Alam, I don't know. But sometimes the worst things are, are answered prayers. We don't know. It's a different way of looking at the world. People don't want to look at it that way. But I read the Quran, and the Quran, it comes back to me. When they were asked, where did this calamity come from? Allah says, It's from your own selves. It didn't say, oh, it's from those evil Quraysh. <laughs> those evil Quraysh. No, Allah wanted the Quraysh to become Muslim. دخل عليهم رسول الله ماذا تقولوا تقولون فيا أخ كريم ابن أخ كريم. You're a noble son of a noble. إذهب اليوم فأنتم الطلقاء. You're free today. I forgive you. He said what لا تثريب عليكم. He said what Yusuf said to his brothers who threw him in a well and left him to die. لا تثريب عليكم because that's the state of believers 
When they get angry, yes, we get angry. But they realize, what am I really getting angry at? At a test that God sent me? Who am I really angry at? See, you can be humanly angry, but who are you really angry about? If everything is a test from Allah, then who are you really angry at? That's a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ تَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ This is, these are days of shukr. لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ you, you, you have two joys. فَرْحَتُونَ حِنَا يُفْتِرُ وَفَرْحَتُونَ حِنَا يَلْقَى رَبُّهُ He has a joy when he completes, he breaks his fast because he's completed the ibadah. And then the delight of the food, most of the big ulama said, it's itmam uh, ta'a, it's completing the, that's the farha, it's not the food. It's actually finishing the ibadah. That's Imam Nawawi, high maqam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ The Prophet was shakur, but he told us to be shakur. One of the arifin said, هَذَا ضَمِيرُ ذَاتِ هَؤُلَا عِبَادُ الذَّاتِ هُنَكَ عِبَادُ الْأَسْمَى So, that's a high maqam. It's where you're always grateful. وَالشُكُرُ صَرْفُ الْعَبْدِ مَا أَوْلَاهُ مَوْلَاهُ مِنْ نِعْمَاهُ فِي رِضَاهُ This is what uh, all the ulama taught and Muhammad uh, al-Musawi said is the meaning of shukr, real shukr. Shukr is to utilize what God has given you. I'miru ala Dawood, shukran. To utilize what he's given you out of gratitude. He gave you an eye to see, not to look at pornography. He gave you a, a, a tongue to speak the truth, not to lie, not to cheat, not to backbite. He gave you a hand to work and, 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 and not to steal or to embezzle or to take things that aren't yours. He gave you feet to walk in righteousness وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هُونَ The servants of, of the merciful who walk, tread lightly on the earth. You know, they talk about carbon footprints now. Carbon footprints. عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ don't have a carbon footprint. They tread lightly on the earth. وَإِذَا خَاطُبُوا مَا الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ we revealed this book on Laylatul Qadr. And what will convey to you what Laylatul Qadr is? Laylatul Qadr, khayru min alfi shahr. It's better than 83 months of worship. The Prophet was, because he was so covetous about solicitous for his ummah, he was concerned that his ummah would not have a lot of rewards when he knew that the ancients had much longer lifespans. So this is min khasaisi rahmati. This is a specific gift to this ummah. That they have a night that is worth months of ibadah. And so in a lifetime, you can literally get years added onto your ibadah. This is a great gift from Allah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا Whoever stands doing extra acts, tahajjud and the tarawih, stands doing extra acts, he has his sins forgi forgiven of what passed. وَمَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ And whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, believing in Allah and believing that the reward is from Allah, Fasting is my own and I reward it myself. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In the hadith, Sahih, وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِي وَمَا تَأَخَرَ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم Whoever stands on Laylat al-Qadr in belief and expecting a reward from Allah he will have his sins forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, As-salawatu wal-jumu'atu ila al-jumu'a wa ramadanu ila ramadan mukaffirat lidhnu. That your prayers, each day you pray, mashtuniba aw mashtanaba al-kabair. As long as he avoids major wrong actions. The prayer, the five prayers that you do, 
And then Jum'ah to Jum'ah, praying Jum'ah and from Jum'ah to Jum'ah, Friday prayer to Friday prayer. And then Ramadan to Ramadan. These will remove your sins. They will remove your sins as long as you avoid major wrong actions. That needs a specific type of tawbah. Sagha'ir get removed from wudu, from prayer, from fasting, from Jum'ah, all these things. But the major wrong actions, Right? And the ulama differ on them, but the major ones are well known. Ma'lumina deen taruratan. Drinking, stealing, cheating, lying, fornication, adultery, all those things that Allah has declared foul, fahsha. So this Ramadan is a great gift of this ummah. It's a time of special gratitude. One of the hallmarks of gratitude is that you share your blessings with others. You share your blessings with others. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وأجود ما يكون في شهر رمضان كان أجود من ريح مرسلة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most generous of men, always. But he was even more generous in Ramadan. Why? زيادة الشكر. The 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 sense of blessing, the gift. It's a great gift. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم رسائل المسلمين.